NASA story you will only see on CBS This Morning. A British student's remarkable invention could help save a generation of babies in war-ravaged Syria. Charlie Daggett had talked with the young man and watched him meet the doctor who inspired him. Life as a Syrian refugee began early for this tiny girl. Away from the war, but not out of danger, premature babies cling to life, fortunate to have reached a Lebanese hospital with incubators. Thousands more do not. Design student James Roberts just happened to catch a documentary about the plight of Syria's youngest victims. I don't think you should eat my glove, but... And the heroic work of British hungry. Syrian doctor Rilla Halam. You're hungry. Is that why you're so grumpy? She was born yesterday. A five-minute segment of this program was just showing how many premature births there were just because of the stresses of war and how many of them were dying. They were essentially losing a generation. So I thought, there's got to be a better way. And he may have just come up with it. What about an affordable, portable incubator? This is the first prototype I created. This consists of a, uh, a heater with a, some computer fans, a humidifier, um, an exhaust fan for bringing oxygen over the child, and a phytotherapy unit all in one. See inside. The 23-year-old just happened to be racking his brains to come up with a final university project when he saw that program. And that's when the first light bulb went off. That's when the first light bulb went off, and then I started researching it, seeing, and I saw how big a problem it is throughout the entire world. The World Health Organization estimates that 15 million babies are born prematurely every year, and preterm complications were to blame for nearly 1 million deaths last year. James started pulling all-nighters, sometimes crashing and burning. I blew up my housemate's hairdryer as well. She didn't know about that. So. <laughs> Finally, his prototype was born. But here's the real magic. Because it's inflatable, it folds into the size of a briefcase, and it can run off a car battery if needed. He got more than an A for his project. He also won the prestigious James Dyson Award, the $50,000 in startup money, and all that publicity that comes with it. And then, James met with the woman who inspired his creation, Dr. Rilla Halam, from that documentary. <laughs> what do you think of James? Oh my goodness, I had tears in my eyes when I got the email about, about him doing the incubator. I mean, what a phenomenal person. It, I think it's a very, very special person who sees this despair and sees these problems and is not only moved, because it's easy to be moved with you know, sympathy or empathy, but to take it to that essential next step of actually taking action about something, about an injustice that you see. Getting his incubator from the workbench to the war zone will take time and money. But we asked him what success meant to him. In 10 years' time, meeting the child I maybe helped out when he was very young, would be incredible. It'd be amazing, actually. <laughs> Taking any invention to market is based on simple supply and demand. Supply may be two years off. There's already plenty of demand. For CBS This Morning, I'm Charlie Daggett in Loughborough, England. Remarkable. He actually won that Dyson Prize over finalists from 18 other countries. So amazing achievement all the way around. It really is. And apparently he had offers to sell this. And he said, no, I wanted to stay in a developing country. Yeah, really, Great story. Very cool.